So, Dale, tell me who your group is and what your goal is with this. We are Ohioans that gets the deceptive RX ballot issue. And mm -hmm. my name is Dale Butland, and mm -hmm. I am the communications director. Right. So, but tell me who the group is that is uh, behind this and what do they want to achieve with it? So we have a co coalition of 41 different organizations that mm -hmm. are comprised of doctors, nurses, veterans, the business community, organized labor, and so on. In fact, there are 30,000 doctors, nurses, pharmacists who are part of our coalition. You can see them yourself on our website, yep. deceptiverxissue.org. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and these are people who are concerned that this ballot initiative, while it sounds good at first blush, most of us know, learned a long time ago, that uh, things that sound too good to be true usually are. Okay. And this ballot issue, according to the experts who have studied it, not only won't fix the problem, everybody agrees that regular Ohioans need access to affordable prescription mm -hmm. drugs. But the experts who have studied this have said not only will this not fix the problem, but it's actually going to make it worse by increasing drug prices for most Ohioans and also reducing access to needed medications. Okay. Uh, how would that happen? Why is that? You're, you're saying that could happen. How? How? Why? Yeah. Well, to start with, two-thirds of the people of this state are not covered under this ballot initiative because, remember, the initiative only applies to drugs that are bought by the state government. Uh -huh. Two-thirds of Ohioans do not get their prescriptions from state programs. They get it through private insurance, insurance okay. uh, provided by their employer. Maybe they're on Medicare. Medicare, of course, is a federal program, not a state program. Sure. So none of those, so none of those people are covered. And even if this ballot initiative could work, which the experts say it can't, but even if it did, and the drug companies were forced to sell drugs to the state for the VA price, like most businesses, they'd probably simply raise the prices on people who aren't covered by this, which is a majority of Ohioans, about 64 percent, 7 million people. Okay. Um, is this proposal similar to what was on the ballot in California? Yeah, this ballot proposal is virtually identical to a proposal that was on the California ballot last year and that went down uh, fairly heavily uh, by about six points. Uh, and maybe more to the point, every major newspaper in the state of California, liberal papers, conservative papers, middle-of-the-road papers, all editorialized against it because they knew it was wrong for California for the same reason that it's wrong for the state of Ohio. Um, the organization that is looking to defeat this proposal spent, I'm told, $110 million in California. That is a lot of money. Why did they spend so much money on that? Well, I, I'm not sure uh, how much was uh, spent, but if you say it was that much, I'll take your word for it. Right. Um, look, it, this is an expensive proposition because the ballot initiative sounds so good at first. Everybody wants access to cheaper drugs. Right. Uh, so what you have to do is an education campaign to, to make people understand that this thing isn't what it seems and that it's actually going to increase drug prices for most people. That requires a lot, including a robust paid media effort, which means television ads. And uh, so that's why. Now, the person on the other side of this, the person who is sponsoring this initiative, is the mm -hmm. same fellow who put it on the ballot last year in California. His name right. is Michael Weinstein. Right. And uh, he runs a, um, a billion-dollar-a-year foundation yeah. uh, called the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Ironically, 80% of their money comes from selling prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. But he takes tens of millions of dollars out of this foundation and spends it on political campaigns similar to what we have here in Ohio and many that are not like we have in Ohio. But the, the point is, in California, he spent about $25 million uh, to try to get this passed. It didn't work, but it is an expensive proposition. The pharmaceutical companies are paying most of the bill on our side because even though we have this large coalition, as I just mentioned, of doctors and nurses and veterans and so forth, they don't have that kind of money lying around in their bank accounts. So if the pharmaceutical companies did not foot the bill for this, I'm not sure who could. Okay. Do you plan to say, spend the same amount of money here in Ohio? There's absolutely no way of telling at this stage of the game uh, how much money will have to be spent. We just started this campaign, 
But I will tell you that, that what we're going to do is to educate Ohio voters so that mm -hmm. by the time Election Day rolls around, they will understand exactly why this is a bad idea, it's bad public policy, and would do damage to the state of Ohio and to the people of the state. Okay, if you're saying that this would raise prices, why would pharma and the pharmaceutical companies be against it? Because raising prices, frankly, means more profits for them. Well, first of all, let me say this, and I say this as someone who has spent most of his adult life fighting for affordable prescription drugs for right. people, including a ballot initiative a few years ago that yep. resulted in the creation of Ohio's Best Rx program, which is a discount card. Yeah. So, so uh, I care a lot less whether this ballot issue would be good or bad for the drug companies than I do about whether it would be good or bad for the state of Ohio and the people of our state, which is why I'm opposing it. But as for the drug companies, why they would be opposed to this, right? this discount that the VA has by law, this 24% mm -hmm. discount that was right. passed by Congress, was in honor of veteran service and sacrifice. It was intended to be for veterans. It was never intended to be for everybody. And uh, I think what the pharmaceutical companies are concerned about is this becoming uh, sort of a, um, uh, sort of a pre precedent, which they would not want to see spread around the rest of the country. But remember too, Danielle, that while a ballot initiative in Ohio can only prohibit Ohio from paying a certain amount of money, they can't uh, require the drug companies to sell the product at that price. So, uh, uh, and, and the other thing that I think is very important to understand is that the other side wants you to believe that Ohio does not currently negotiate prices for drugs. We do. In yeah, fact, I know. 70, 70, 75% of the drugs the state buys is for Medicaid recipients. Mm -hmm. And by law, Medicaid gets a 23% discount right. on uh, br branded drugs, slightly less for generics. But the bottom line is, is that the three former Ohio Medicaid directors who have looked at this and served under both Democratic governors and Republican governors say that while we can't know exactly what the VA pays because there are additional discounts that the VA negotiates, just like Ohio does, we negotiate for additional discounts beyond the 23% uh, mandated discount that we get. But the Medicaid directors say we're already paying pretty close to the VA price for three quarters of the drugs we buy. So when the other side says, oh, passing this is going to save taxpayers $400 million, well, that's preposterous. I'd like to know where they get that number, and I hope some, somebody in the news media will ask them. Um, well, there are several other programs, public programs, that are paid by the state besides Medicare and Medicaid. You know, Bureau of Workers' Comp is one of them. Yeah, so, so a, as I said, roughly 75% of the drugs we buy are for m Medicaid recipients. The other 25% okay. are, are for state employees and retirees, prisoners, college and right. university personnel, right. and so forth. Now, the state negotiates discounts that are not mandated, but are right. negotiated with the drug companies. And mm -hmm. the concern is, is that if the, if the drug companies were suddenly required to sell to the state at the VA price, a lot of these additional discounts and supplemental discounts that the state already negotiates would go away. And if that happens, the Medicaid directors say that will increase what Ohio pays for drugs by tens of millions of dollars a year. Okay, uh, going back to my question that I asked before, and you talked about, you know, what you believe and, and your goal to lower prices, that's not necessarily in line with what the pharmaceutical companies uh, want. And again, raising prices, which your group says this will do, means more profits for them. So why would they be spending $110 million to fight a proposal that is going to put more money in their pockets? Well, as I said before, and I'll say again, mm -hmm. I personally don't care very much whether this would be good or right. bad for the drug companies. What I care about is whether this would be good or bad for Ohio and Ohioans. Right, but and you're I'm just, you're, you you're the every, PR person. You're not, you're not the group. And I'm telling you, and I'm not the group. You're, you're not part of the, the pharmaceutical group. industries. You're the spokesperson. So, yeah, I, I right. mean, I'm not, you may feel a certain I'm way, not, but that doesn't mean it's in line with what they're doing. What I'm telling you is, is that I am the spokesperson 
for the campaign. Right. If you'd like to know what the drug companies think, you should ask the drug companies. I don't speak for them. I speak for the campaign. But and they're behind the campaign. The campaign. Which is, they, they are part of the campaign. We have 41 different statewide organizations that are a part of this, including 30,000 doctors and nurses and pharmacists. Um, and and uh, they are concerned about higher drug costs for their patients. Uh, and they see it every day in their offices. But this ballot initiative would, in the judgment of every expert who's looked at it, result in increased drug prices for a majority of Ohioans and reduced access to needed medications for many others. That's why people are opposed to it on our side. That's why we have the coalition we do. The other side, you should ask them, has zero organizations in their coalition. They have nobody who has endorsed their proposal because everyone understands, except them, that this would be bad public policy. Okay, uh, Pharma, the Department of Commerce, Ohio Manufacturers Association, they tried very hard to keep this off the ballot in Ohio. Why wouldn't you just leave this up to Ohio voters instead of trying legal maneuvers to get it off the ballot? Well, I was not a part of that exercise, so I'm not quite sure what happened. But I do know that every time there's a ballot issue in Ohio, and I've been doing politics in this state now for three decades or so, okay. is that it, it's often the case that there's a challenge on the signatures. Are the signatures valid? Were they collected in the right way? Did they mm -hmm. meet the tests of law? Right. That's apparently what happened here. Right. Ultimately, the signatures were judged valid, and the thing is going forward this year. This could have been on the ballot, uh, and I think the backers of the measure in, uh, wanted it to be on the ballot last year, the same as it right. was in California. Right. Uh, but it'll be on the ballot this year instead. But had it been on the ballot last year in Ohio, uh, I have no doubt in my mind it would have gone down to the defeat that it deserves, just like it did in California last year. Okay. Um, in your frequently asked questions, uh, and you mentioned this just a moment ago, you guys were kind of questioning the uh, Michael Weinstein and the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Why is that? Yeah. Well, I just think the people should know, just like they know who's on our side. I think right. they ought to know who is who is backing this on the other side. And the fact is, this is a controversial activist in the state of California. Sure. Uh, who is who spends tens of millions of tax-exempt dollars mm -hmm. on things that are many times unrelated to the anti-AIDS uh, mission of his foundation. Earlier this year, for example, he spent $5 million to put a ballot initiative uh, on the ballot in Los Angeles that would have resulted in the stoppage of residential housing construction in L.A. for two years. Now, it went down pretty big, 70 to 30, but he spent $5 million to do it. What does that have to do with the anti-AIDS mission of his foundation? This, this is the kind of stuff he does. And I want to mention one other thing, Danielle, because everyone so far has been talking about one of the things the ballot initiative does, which, mm -hmm. which has to do with drug pricing. Right. But the other piece is, hidden away in this ballot initiative under paragraph G is the unprecedented right that it would give the four named sponsors of this initiative, three of whom work for Mr. Weinstein, mm -hmm. would give them the unprecedented right to intervene in any legal challenge that is filed against this initiative if it's passed and becomes law, and would require the taxpayers of this state to pay their legal fees. That's never been done before in the history of the state of Ohio. And given the fact that Mr. Weinstein and his foundation are very litigious, they filed some 53 lawsuits against government agencies in various states around the country, including three here in the state of Ohio already. This could get very expensive for taxpayers of the state. Um, that's not totally correct, because actually what the proposal says is that the people behind this would have to pay a civil fine of $10,000 apiece if the court finds the law unenforceable. So it's not completely uh, transparent that they're going to have to, uh, that the state's going to have to pick up the cost uh, of any lawsuits. No, uh, ac actually, Danielle, I would encourage you to read it again. It specifically says that the four named sponsors are indemnified by the state of Ohio, which means the taxpayers, with their legal fees. In other words, their lawyer f lawyers' fees would be paid by the taxpayers. And if you think that a $10,000 civil penalty, if they lose, would come anywhere close to covering those legal fees, 
uh, why I have a bridge I'd like to sell you in Brooklyn. Well, that's <laughs> only though. That's only if they find it unenforceable. But it's ten thousand no, dollars a piece. That that's that's if yeah that's that's if they lose right. Right. If they. If they, if if the lawsuits are successful, or I mean, if the four ballot sponsors are, you know, successful, then they don't pay the civil fine, but we still pay their legal fees. Well, that's only if there's, uh, if you're contesting the law, if you're going to be suing them for the law. Danielle, I will tell you that everyone who has looked at this is a is certain that this will lead to a tsunami of lawsuits. Okay. For example, veterans may very well so we have every veterans organization in the state as a part of our coalition including the vfw the who just joined yesterday except the ohio department of veterans i'm they, sorry except you have a lot of smaller veterans groups but you don't have the ohio oh, you're department talking about the, of veterans well because that is a state agency and okay. the state doesn't get involved in ballot issues but i'm but i'm uh, talking about private organizations the vfw the american legion the order mm -hmm. of the purple heart the korean war veterans the jewish war veterans we have 10 of them uh and and so they're all opposed because they believe that they are supposed to have this discount that was passed by congress and given right. to veterans in honor of their service and sacrifice this was never supposed to be given to everybody. As the veterans have told me, if everybody's special, then nobody's special. And, and so I, yeah, I could very well see some of the veterans organizations suing if this thing became law. Now, who would, who would pay the legal fees for, uh, you know, this has never been done in the history of the state of Ohio, Danielle. We have never had anything on the ballot that says that if it's challenged in court, okay. because remember, the. Because remember, the Attorney General of Ohio, by law, defends the state when it's sued, right? Uh -huh. yep. But under this ballot proposal, these guys would get to hire their own lawyers and who would sit presumably side by side with the Attorney General and would intervene in this lawsuit and we're covering their legal fees. That's never been done in history and I think the voters ought to know about this before they cast a ballot on this yeah, issue. Yeah, I absolutely think they did. But let, we're running out of time, so let's go to a couple of things. You said that there were so many groups that looked at this proposal and are against it, that it's not going to yeah. work. Well, the yes. analysis that was put out of the statute was funded by the pharmaceutical research and manufacturers. You say it's independent and objective. How could this possibly be objective if pharma represents the pharmaceutical industries whose profits would be negatively impacted by this initiative? How could it be objective? Well, for, first of all, it is not clear, as you just mentioned yourself a mo moment ago, it's not clear that the profits would be negatively affected. But leave, but leave that aside. Okay. The three, the three, uh, the the uh, two authors of this, and now we have a third uh, person. Mm -hmm. These are three former Medicaid directors who are nationally respected in their fields. They've worked for both Democratic and Republican governors. And to the extent that, uh, and I'm not saying that you are, but the other side is always trying to de denigrate them as hired mercenaries. But they I are I think hired. they deserve better than, well, they're, I think they, they deserve. They well, but you, but if you're suggesting that their analysis is flawed as a result of that or somehow biased as a result of that, I would simply say, then where's the other guy's analysis? Where is the analysis saying that this is a good public policy idea? This has also been analyzed, by the way, by a former state budget director mm -hmm. who also says, who also says that this is bad public policy and that it would end up costing the state rather than saving the state money. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I would say that every analysis that's been done has, has found the same thing. I'm perfectly willing to argue the case if you can find me an expert that says otherwise, but so far the other side has produced nobody. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question about this. And, uh, you know, I looked at the date. The independent study was released in September 2016. Why six months earlier than the study was released did Pharma sue to try to block the initiative before going to the voters? As I said, Danielle, I was not involved in that. I have, I have no idea. I'll, all, all I can tell you is that it's not unusual to have a ballot initiative to have the signatures challenged and so forth, which, uh, which apparently is what happened here. 
but, but I don't think that has anything to do with the veracity of the study. Uh, and uh, I, I haven't found, and, 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 and I think this is fair to say, that the other side has not challenged anything that's in the study. Everything there is pretty carefully footnoted, mm -hmm. it's referenced, and, and, and I would ask one, one other thing, Danielle. When the other side was thinking about putting this on the ballot issue, this has been kicking around in Ohio, as you just mentioned, for about eight, 18 months now. Yeah. Never Certainly once, never once, mm -hmm. never once has Mr. Weinstein or any of the ballot sponsors ever gone to any expert here in the state. They've never gone to the state itself. They've never gone to the Medicaid department. They've never gone to any affected entity to say, would this work? What do you think about this? Is there some way that we could do it better? They haven't had one discussion with any legislator, with any state agency, with any organization, with any doctors, any nurses, nobody. They just, they just put it on the ballot, and then they complain when the experts look at it and say, this is not a very good idea. But these are things they could have learned a long time ago had they had any interest in doing that. Okay, let's go back to then quickly Michael Weinstein, and then we'll talk about prices and, and access to. You, you talk about him and all the money that he spent um, to defeat this measure and all the lawsuits that he files, but why would an agency whose mission is to uh, reduce prices of HIV and AIDS drugs be in support of something that would increase those prices? I mean, this is a guy who treats, his agency treats 600,000 people in 36 countries. This is his sole mission. Why would he want something that is going to hurt the people who need to buy the drugs? Well, first off, it should be the sole mission of his foundation. I'm not sure it is, as I just indicated to you before, because Mr. Weinstein spends tens of millions of dollars on many things that are unrelated to that. But mm -hmm. there's no question that the AIDS Healthcare Foundation has done some good work in the past, and they are continuing to do good work around actually the world uh, on, on this subject. But let's remember how this becomes a billion dollar foundation. Mr. Weinstein buys these uh, anti-AIDS uh, and HIV drugs mm -hmm. at a very reduced price in, mm -hmm. in something called the, three, called the 340B program. Okay. So he buys them at, at a very reduced rate, but those, uh, but, those, um, but, that, uh, uh, but those discounts are not passed on to the people he treats. Um, when he charges insurance companies and so forth for the treatments, he bills them the full amount. And the difference between what he paid for the drug and what he's selling them for is goes into his foundation. That's how it becomes a billion dollar foundation. It's also worthy of note that so this ballot his patients initiative... Don't get any dis you're saying his patients don't get any discounts on their drugs? We can find no, we can find no, we can find no evidence that those discounts are passed on to his patients. If they were, if, if, he, if he were given those drugs out at the same cost or slightly above the same cost that he buys them for, he wouldn't have a billion-dollar foundation. Well, AIDS is a pretty uh, big and, issue and, worldwide, and if you're treating people in, well, in 36 countries and 600,000 of them, why would you have such a response to your company if you were doing stuff that was kind of uh, questionable in terms of pricing? I'm not suggesting that he's doing anything illegal or wrong. I'm simply saying that's how you build up a billion dollar foundation is, mm -hmm. is because there's a lot of money that he is saving, for want of a better term, you know, between what he's buying the drugs for and what he's selling them for. And then all that excess goes into his foundation. That's how it becomes a billion dollar foundation. Okay. But let's be clear about one thing. Even if this ballot initiative passes, it will have no effect on the price of HIV drugs in the state of Ohio. Ohio is already part of a multi-state collaborative that negotiates the best possible uh, di uh, uh, prices for HIV drugs. And as a matter of fact, the experts say that we're buying those drugs now for less than the VA pays for them right now. So there's no evidence at all that passing this initiative would have any effect on the price of HIV AIDS drugs in this state. So you're telling me that they can buy HIV and AIDS drugs at less than the VA can buy? Yes, that, that appears to be the case, and that appears. is in the study that you just referenced. Okay, the study pardon? which, yeah. you know, as I brought up, was funded by the pharma industry. but. 
uh, part of this is going to possibly raise the price to vets. Yes. Is the pharmaceutical company really going to turn around with all the negative press that they've had and raise the price to veterans? I mean, just just from no. an optic standpoint. No, understand that. No, understand how how. And by how law, this they works. can't. By law, they can't. No. Okay. Danielle, and you had said here's this was done. It, and you had said this was done for the veterans, you know, in honor of their service. Yeah. I, well, it wasn't because. Uh, Big Pharma decided, oh, let's be good to the vets. I mean, the government passed a law saying you had to give it to them for that price. May I, may I talk now? Yep, go ahead. <laughs> all right, all right. What, what, what you are referring to is the 24% mandated discount that's right. in law. Right. But that's not the lowest price the VA pays because in addition to that 24% mandated discount that isn't mm -hmm. going to go away, you're absolutely right, that is, that is mandated by law. But in addition to that, the VA negotiates additional discounts with the drug manufacturers. Additional discounts, rebates and so forth, which means that the VA's lowest price is much, is much lower than that than that 24% discount. But if, but if the drug companies are forced to sell to the state of Ohio or any other state uh, at that mandated VA price, mm -hmm. they don't have any incentive anymore to do the additional discounts, the negotiated discounts. And that's what's going to go away. So uh, and, 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 that's, and that's what is going to increase the prices. It's not the mandated discount that's going to go away. It's the voluntary discounts. And the same is true on the, on the other side with regard to the state of Ohio. Ohio, like the VA, gets a 23% mandated discount on all the drugs they buy for Medicaid recipients. Me yeah, Medicaid. That's about three quarters of the drugs they buy. In addition to that mandated discount, they negotiate additional discounts. And the concern is those are the ones, the additional discounts, the negotiated ones that are going to go away if this ballot initiative passes. And that's what would raise the price of drugs for the state of Ohio. But again, what I'm saying to you is, are the pharmaceutical companies really going to turn around and say, you know what, because we had to uh, give the state of Ohio lower drug prices, we're going to raise the, we're not going to give you those discounts anymore for your service that you're saying that they get. Are they really going to come out and say that or do that? Danielle, I, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Are they going to take away the 24% mandated discount? Well, they of can't. They can't. I'm it saying, is mandated by law. I'm saying, so you're turning but if around. You're, if, you're saying but that. If you're, but it, if you're. <laughs> go. But, what, but what, what the ballot initiative proponents are saying is that the discount that is now for the VA should be extended to everybody, including the state of Ohio. Yeah. That was never the intent of the law. That was never the intent of the law. It was never intended to be for everybody. It was intended to be for veterans in honor of their service and sacrifice. And if, and if, and if you know, everybody's special, Danielle, nobody's special, right? It, it, it's like a restaurant. If a restaurant says, you know, for veterans, we're going to give 20% uh, tw tw off their dinner bill. And then everyone comes and says, well, wait a minute, if you're going to give that to veterans, then, then I want that, too. Well, why do they what give it the to Medicaid and Medicare? That? Why do they give a discount what? to Medicare and Medicare? Because it's, because it's mandated by law, exactly. just like the VA is. So when they're trying well, to mandate this by law to the citizens of Ohio. But, you, but, <laughs> but it is mandated for Medicaid recipients, not for everybody. And... and the voluntary discounts, the negotiated ones that are not mandated by law, those are what, what possible incentive would the drug companies or frankly any other company selling anything have to negotiate additional discounts if they're required to give a mandated discount that's supposed to be for one group to everybody? I mean, but, a restaurant wouldn't do that. <laughs> but, but on the same thing, if we won't buy, the state won't buy for the price that you want to sell it at, you're going to say we're, you're, the farms are just going to walk away from all that business? I mean, that's just not plausible. They could take their business really? to other drug manufacturers. Well, first of all, 
you have to look at what the the what Ohio buys in terms of drugs is mm -hmm. less than five percent of all the drugs that are bought by states. If you look at all the state purchases of drugs, okay. what is sold in Ohio is less than five percent. It's okay. about four. It's about four. It's about four point uh, eight. Eight percent. Then what are they so worried it is about? Not, it is not clear to me that the drug companies would be interested in continuing to sell drugs at this price, which they're not mandated to do, because no. remember, as I said before, all the ballot issue, I issue can do is prohibit the state from paying more than a certain price. But it can't force the drug companies to sell the product at that price. So, so it's not clear to me that the drug companies wouldn't say, you know, this is not a precedent that we uh, care to set, and so we won't yeah. sell, sell the drugs at that price. Because and then, it's going to and reduce then what does Ohio do? And then what does Ohio do at that point if we can't get the drugs, but we have a law in place saying that we can't pay more than the VA price? What if Ohio cannot negotiate that price with the drug companies? Uh, then what? Okay, so tell me which manufacturers are going to say, well, we're not going to give it to you for that price. Tell me which, you're, you what represent you this industry, which drug manufacturers are going to come out and Danielle, say, I, we're not going to give I you do, that price. I do, I do not represent the industry, Danielle. I represent the campaign. If you'd like to talk to the industry, I'm sure I can find somebody who would be willing to do that you for you. You represent the but, campaign, But right which now, is funded, I'm talking about the campaign. You represent the campaign, which is mostly funded by the pharmaceutical industry. So the pharmaceutical industry that this campaign uh, is being funded by, I'd like to know which manufacturers are going to come out and say, we're not giving the VA any more discounts, and because we have to give Ohio a lower price, we're not going to give you discounts anymore. In fact, we might not even sell to you. Who is going to come out and say that? I'd like to know the drug company. Danielle, I, I don't know the drug companies. I don't represent the drug companies. I don't speak for the drug companies. I am just telling you what the experts have said. The experts who have studied this have all come to the same conclusion. Now, if you want to challenge them, fine, but I, 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 but I, I can't give you the name of drug companies because I don't represent the drug companies. But you're representing the campaign which is being funded by manufacturers. So if these manufacturers... We if have 41... I, I, Danielle, I also represent in this coalition, we have 30,000 doctors and nurses and pharmacists. I don't speak for the doctors. I don't speak for the Ohio Medical Association or the Ohio Nurses Association mm -hmm. or the Ohio Pharmacists Association. They're, they, they are all members of this coalition too. But if you want to know why they have opposed the thing, I suggest you talk to them. Um, I have actually, um, and they're not members of the coalition, they're just saying they're not behind the proposal. Um, and I, I beg your pardon, Danielle, they have signed on to the coalition, and you can see it, and you can see it on our website. They oh. are part of the Vote No Coalition. Well, yeah, but, but they're not contributing to it, and, and the organization that I spoke to, specifically NAMI of Ohio, said they just have concerns based on the many uh, presentations that were given to them. So they're really doing it because they're scared versus the fact that they support it and said they were very open to hearing other suggestions and proposals. Well, I, I will uh, take your word for it, Danielle, that they are motivated by being scared. I yeah. have never heard that, but if, but if that's your take on it, but fine. Yeah, I, I spoke directly to them because I wanted to know, why are you against this proposal? And that is what they told me. And, and they said because we're scared? Yeah, they're worried that their patients will not get the drugs that they need or that their prices will increase. That is exactly what they well, told it, me. Is, well, hasn't, that's exactly what I've been telling you, too. But for some reason, you, you won't accept it from me. <laughs> But, well, what I'm saying, well, the reason why I'm having difficulty in accepting this is because, first of all, there's no proof that's going to happen. It's all, it may happen. And second of all, the analysis, again, that says that this is maybe going to happen was funded by the pharmaceutical industry, who has an incentive to keep prices up. They don't want to decrease their this. prices. Why would they? For the, for the sake of our discussion, Danielle. Okay. If you want to conclude 
that the three former Ohio Medicaid directors and the state budget director Who were have paid. a study that is that that is compromised compromised because they were paid. Yep. Then maybe you can explain to me why every newspaper in California, including the LA Times and the San Francisco Chronicle, who are very progressive papers, can you explain to me why all every single paper in the state of California editorialized against this initiative? Is because is because that they they were all bought to by the pharmaceutical companies? Or do you think that maybe there may be something wrong with this proposal? I, I don't know, and that's a very good question, and I certainly will look into that, and I appreciate you uh, bringing that to my attention. I, I don't know if it's the same reason that some of the groups have signed on, uh, because they are scared of what could possibly happen. This is a risky proposal, Danielle, that has, that has ne and I don't think anybody can say with certainty this is 100% going to happen. No, right. Nobody knows. What right. they're saying is that it is likely to happen. And it's likely to happen for all of these different reasons. Now, right. if, voter, if voters in Ohio want to the drug manufacturers don't want to lose out on profits. That's why it may happen. <clears throat> I, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, if, you know, if that's your take, no? that's, well, it, that's it, fine. Is it I not? Can't... Uh, you, uh, is the pharmaceutical industry really uh, being so altruistic and saying, we don't want to raise prices for the people in Ohio, and that's why we're against this. I mean, that's absurd. What I have told you, and I'll say it once more, okay. is that the pharmaceutical companies do not want to set a precedent of having yeah. to sell prescription drugs to states for the same price that it is mandated by con Congress that they sell to veterans to. Right, because um, what's the, what would be the result of that then? What would be the result if they were mandated to sell them at the prices that the VA pays for them? What would then be the fallout for the pharmaceutical industry? I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Their but profits will go near, down. Well, I, you know, <laughs> Danielle, I, I, I realize that you're on the other side of this issue, and that's fine. You're, you're, you're perfectly, uh, you, you have a perfect right to take any position you wish on the issue. All... All I am saying to you is, as somebody myself who has been involved in this fight to try to bring affordable drugs to people, and I've done it for a very long time. I know you have. Uh, I, I have. I have looked at this, and in my judgment, and not just my judgment, but in the judgment of every newspaper in the state of California, in the judgment of every major medical organization in this state, uh, in the judgment of the of the three experts, uh, four experts now who who have looked at this thing, everybody believes this will backfire and not do what it promises, and okay. and and will have the reverse effect. I think it would be bad for Ohio and be bad for Ohioans. That's that's why I'm opposed to it. If you have a different view, that's fine, but but I think that between now and election day, we're going to do everything we can to educate voters as to what this will likely mean for them if this passes, and then they'll have to make a judgment as to, as to how they want to vote. Exactly. All right. Dale, I really appreciate your time and for entertaining my uh, arguments. Um, and we will... I, I, just, I, I, just, I just hope, Danielle, the, the, the only thing I would ask is mm -hmm. that you be as as, how shall I say, uh, that you would be as suspicious and as questioning of the other side as you've been of me. Oh, and I in will bring these, yeah, I will bring all of these points up. Um, well, not just these points, these are the ones that you've raised against me. What I'm saying is, when you look at our FAQs, for example. Yeah, I looked at every as single As you noticed, vir virtually every declarative statement we make has been foot footnoted with a clickable, with, with, with a linkable footnotes so that you so that you can read the source material yourself they on their website I don't know if you've looked at their website they just say stuff yeah. they say it's gonna save 400 million dollars a year where did they get that figure here's my guess I'm gonna guess that they got the 400 million dollar figure by looking at the total amount Ohio spends on drugs every uh -huh. year and then they just took 20 24 percent off that and that's how they wind up with 400 million dollars if okay. that's the case, if that's the case, you can readily see the problem, right? Ohio doesn't pay <laughs> the retail rate or the wholesale rate. Ohio already gets 
almost the VA price for three quarters of the drugs it buys. So you can't just say, well, we'll take 24% off that price, right? So, I, I mean, I just think they ought to be held to the same standard anyway. They, they ought to at least be forced to demonstrate how they come up with these figures. Okay, fair deal. And I will certainly ask all right. them all of these questions. La last question I have. When, when yes. would you expect this piece will air? Um, we're going to do a few pieces, and this particular okay. piece is going to air tomorrow. I don't know if it's on the 6 o'clock or 11 o'clock news. Okay. I will, I will be tuned in okay. because, because I know you'll be fair. <laughs> I, I will be fair. Um, I, you know, I've done okay. my research on this topic, I think, as you can see. Um, yep. So I will, and I will certainly hold them as accountable as I've held you.